Kia ora. Good morning, most likely to, to all of you um, in today's webinar. I'm Christina Hoppner and I'm really pleased to be showing you Mahara 23.04 that the Catalyst team or the Mahara team at Catalyst released at the end of April. And um, in this video, I'm oh, in this session today, I'm going to show you the highlights of this release. So that is major new functionality um, that adds a new portfolio type and also changes the portfolio submission process along with a um, number of um, usability improvements that uh, are then available within. In this release, again, we would like to thank a number of organizations that made some of those new functionalities possible, and they are from Aotearoa, New Zealand, Europe, and Japan. And so I'm really, I'd, I'd like to extend thanks to all of them who made it possible that we could put new features in and also have bugs fixed, because it's not always only about the features, but also about making small incremental improvements. So the first functionality that I want to show you today is the outcomes portfolio, or what we call outcomes portfolio for a more generic term. Um, originally, this functionality was developed for Wiltshire College and University Centre in the UK, um, who approached us because they said, we have these education, health and care plans for our students, so students that need more assistance um, to master their learning and master everyday life. And um, they had been using Moodle before then, um, but it didn't quite work for them. And they also wanted to make sure that they can show the evidence of students and that students as well as uh, teaching staff and other support staff can add to the student's record of learning. And that's why they thought a portfolio might be a better approach, because in Mahara you can put all of these things onto a page. However, because uh, some of those students had learning challenges, they weren't quite happy with uh, some of the workflows that we have in Mahara, and really wanted to look at usability in particular, and uh, providing a more guided portfolio approach, and also not show everything to the students. Besides also being able to create portfolios collaboratively between the students, teachers, and support staff. And so that's where the outcomes portfolio comes in because everything culminated in that, that it is being set up in groups and um, we hide more things from students, so the roles in a group play a massive role in order to ensure that students only see how much they are supposed to see, as well as the teachers too, um, because then there's also the level of administrators who actually set up these portfolios. But what better way to, for me to actually show you how that is being done? And so I have my typical personas, Petra Pedersen, who is the teacher, and then Paula Paulson, who is a student. So I'll be switching between the two to show you what the outcomes portfolio looks like, um, depending on who you are in the system, or in this case, in a group. So every student would receive a group so that they have a space for themselves that is only available to them and their teachers. And in that group, a bit, um, bit an administrator can set up, and in this case, uh, Petra is actually also an administrator, and therefore she has the power to set up these groups and can also select the group type which is outcomes, members, tutors, and administrators. Those are the three roles available. And um, somebody only sees those this group type when the institution allowed the use of outcomes portfolios. As soon as the group type has been selected, certain changes are made in the backend so that some functionality is not even available in the group, and also that 
when a new, new portfolio is created, it automatically is set up as outcomes portfolio. So in my case, I already have an outcomes portfolio set up so that I can show you um, the what, what it looks like, not just with one line, but with multiple lines. And so some of you might think, oh, this looks very much like the portfolio completion functionality and the, the dashboard is there. And yes, we have been repurposing a number of concepts that we are already working with in Mahara um, because this is not the first time that we are doing uh, special functionality for portfolios. So this is kind of where we want to get with the outcomes that um, the outcomes are listed all in panels, they can be clicked. And once you will see more of the outcomes, you can actually have a longer description of it because some of those um, e EHCP, uh, so the educa education, health and care plans can have quite long descriptions. We also see the outcome type, which is color coded, which is automatically done by the system. And uh, then through the help icon, we can see what these abbreviations mean. Below that is the list of pages that are associated with this particular outcome, which a teacher can sign off and state, yes, everything has been done there. Um, and they can also um, sign off an outcome itself that is not done automatically because a teacher might want to add another um, activity to it. Then we have some extra fields like support taking place um, so that a teacher can indicate whether that outcome has already started or not. And they can also leave a quick note, which only they can edit, but students can only see, but they always see when it was left last. Now, if an outcome has already been um, marked as completed, I as teacher cannot change um, the these two items here, the progress and support taking place. I can also not add any more pages to that outcome. However, when the outcome is not completed, I can add more activity pages, which are the normal portfolio pages, and I can also uh, decide whether support is out already taking place or not, and what I want to say in the progress. Now, how do I actually get to this page? Well, when you set, uh, when you set up a collection, um, it automatically, when you're in an outcomes group, tells you that um, outcomes are selected. And then you are taken to, oh, sorry, let me go back to the front page of the portfolio. So if you here on the portfolio itself, click the configure icon, which takes us to the settings page of the outcome. Um, there's the collection name, and then I automatically see the outcomes portfolio is selected. And as soon as I select that, I also have outcomes categories available. And the outcomes categories, as well as subjects to which I can tie an activity, are currently set up directly in the database um, by uploading a CSV file via a command line script. Because as with all functionality that goes into Mahara, um, we have a phase one and then we, we are looking for feedback and after that it can be iterated over and more functionality added. And in this case, because it was already quite a large project, we kept uh, the functionality to what is visible to students and to teachers most, not worrying so much about the administration area, because that is typically only done once. So now that I've selected uh, outcomes portfolio and my outcomes category, I can click on continue and that is where a new screen appears. And that is the one where I set the outcomes. So I can give the short title, a full title, and then assign an outcome type, which is narrowed down based on the outcome type category that I had selected before. And so I can have as many outcomes as I like. I can only delete an outcome if there are no um, activity pages associated with it, 
but even when the collection has already been started, can I still add more outcomes? And now if you remember your normal workflow of setting up a collection, you would be going to the page that says now select the pages that you want to add. This is not the case anymore because what we are trialing is a different way. Early on, I mentioned that we've been looking into making a number of usability improvements to help guide um, the creation of the portfolio more. And so what we have done is instead of requiring people to set up pages individually and then pull them into the collection, that once they are here on that outcomes overview page, they click on an outcome and add the page immediately here. And so that solves two things. A, it is more guided. Um, we don't have to leave the collection in order to add more pages to it. And secondly, the page is automatically also associated with the correct outcome. So now I can give my page um, a title. And I have the page description and tags available, so all the normal things that we typically have. But in addition, I also see an activity description um, that I can fill in. And I can also select a subject. So in this case, it is not restricted to just one category, but all the subjects that are available on the site are currently displayed. Um, and then an administrator or a teacher can select the correct one. I can also say who is actually responsible for this activity to support the student. In my case, I only have one teacher in the group, so that's why they are selected automatically. But if I had more, I could select another person. There's also the possibility to set a start date and an end date for the activity to help me track that more and keep an eye on and decide whether um, I'm a little overdue or not in uh, the completion of the activity. Uh, but the, the, the dates do not yet add to any sort of report or um, send out notifications. So that could be something to do at a later stage. And then I have four levels of achievement available that I can name how I like. And so if you know that um, all the outcomes portfolios on the site need to have follow a particular language, then of course you can put that language directly into the language pack, make a customizations on your site. Um, alternatively, you can leave it up to here like I have, where you leave the standard language and then for each uh, activity page, the language can be changed. Now, once I click the create button, the, the save button there, I'm entering the edit mode and can see my um, activity title, the long description, the outcome immediately, and also the outcome type. And then there's a lot more available once I click on the full view of um, information that I might want to collect. So I see the responsible staff, the subject, the time frame, and I can also provide a commentary about the strategies and the support that I've started as a teacher or that I want, um, want the student to use, the resources that we are using for this activity, and then what type of learner support the student has received. And saving those immediately saves them to the database um, without needing to refresh the page. And only the teacher can enter things. Then I also have a checkpoint available. That is a new block in Mahara um, that is typically not automatically on the page, but I added it to the template in the site administration so that it's just easier because every activity in our case needs at least one checkpoint. So one point in time when 
when a student needs to provide some feedback or needs to make a reflection um, in order to say how far they've gotten. So they, um, and I as teacher can also add comments. And can save that, it looks very much like a comment. But as you can see, this is all done on the edit screen. I do not need to go to the display screen and then enter the comment. As teacher, I also see the achievement levels and the drop-down menu only mentions the generic names because some of those level uh, achievement level descriptions could be very long. So uh, kind of could be a space problem at some point and to make it simpler, we have the levels here, but the full description is then available via the help icon. And so we have three places of tracking. We have the outcome that can be marked as complete. So that is the overall um, container. Within the outcome, there are activities that a teacher can sign off in order to say, yes, this activity has been completed. And then we go one step further with the checkpoints that track the progress against an activity where the teacher can um, assign achievement levels. Now, what does that look like for the student? So let's check what Paula Paulson, our student, can see. So Paula is in her group, the outcomes group, and goes to her portfolio page and sees the page like the teacher does. However, she does not have the configuration button at the right hand side available, so she cannot set up outcomes herself. She sees the same information, um, but because this outcome is signed off, can only see um, the text from the teacher. But even if the outcome is not yet signed off, she does not have the possibility to click any buttons or add something into the progress because that is reserved for a teacher. Now, when she goes to the activity, remember she is not actually creating a page. She doesn't have the add button, so she can only follow an activity that a teacher has set up. When she clicks on the activity, she also enters edit mode. Um, and therefore can immediately start typing. Now, if she were to go to a page that has already been signed off, she is in display mode. Because we assume once a page has been signed off, it is less likely that somebody does want to make changes because it's supposed to be completed. Whereas if a student goes to a page where they are actively working on it, they are entering edit mode directly from here. Therefore, don't need to click another link or another button in order to enter edit mode, but they are taken directly in it. And then they can see the description, they can see all the, the formal criteria, they can see the the text that Petra has put in for the strategies, resources, and then also learner support. And of course, Paula can also leave a comment in on the checkpoint. And because it is the portfolio for the student, Paula can now, of course, also add any other content to her page um, of the artifact types that are available. And so here you see in Another usability improvement that we have made, which is that blocks are now added in full screen, or full width mode to a page um, and not in kind of one of those column modes, so a third of the page. So that will help um, when pages are created on mobile, because of course in mobile everything shrinks. And so if the default width were just one third of the full width um, 
on mobile, it looks very good because everything is just um, scrolling through from top to bottom. However, when you go to desktop, the, the block width doesn't extend all the way. And so it just sits on this narrow page. And that's why we have decided to make the, um, to make the default block width full width because also more and more websites are created that way that you do not necessarily work in blocks so much and columns, but have um, everything go uh, one after the other. So that is one um, usability improvement that is throughout the platform. Uh, the other things uh, that I showed so far are only available in the outcomes portfolio where we are trialing those workflow changes and seeing if they make sense, um, if they are helpful. So that is so far for the outcomes portfolio pretty much. Um, if I go back to the first screen for it, um, you can see that Paula cannot assess herself, um, cannot, mark it as uh, cannot mark an outcome as completed. So that is reserved for her teacher, but she can still do a lot in the portfolio. And so just a quick check in with all of you um, to see if that were functionality that um, could be of interest to you. And please do Grab the microphone if you like, or otherwise uh, type in the chat. And of course, there are now lots of possibilities of how to extend that because some of the restrictions that we currently have in the system might not be suited to you. So for example, that only teachers can set up uh, portfolio pages, but not students. And so there is always the possibility to change that, of course, either just for your site or in general and make it more flexible, make it more configurable. Um, but we often start with one functionality and then see how we can expand it. Great that the uh, going to full width um, is useful and it sounds like you have more students starting their portfolios on mobile day. Uh, I can speak, Christina, if yes, you like. Please, I'm please go ahead, Richard. Richard, Richard from Spain. I'm, I'm really speaking to encourage you because I don't like you having to speak one hour with nobody giving feedback. So I want to give feedback and I think that, you know, it's great. It looks really, really, really good. So many congratulations to you and the team Thank you. Um, as, as for using it. You know, I think that um, in my context, it's quite difficult to use this because we have such a rigid um, evaluation or assessment regime. And this is um, this is more like a prison than than a, <laughs> than a, a space which we can sort of um, we can um, configure at, at our own uh in, in in a way just to suit us as as, as educators so mm -hmm. i i think that um it's unlikely i, I teach in um in a university context uh, but certainly for continuing education or uh n n not um non-standard courses this could be absolutely great so i think that we will be looking at it definitely mm -hmm. so m many 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 congratulations thank you Thank you for your feedback, Richard. And yes, unfortunately, not everybody who might be interested at, interested in using it from a pedagogical perspective might be able to use it if it is not suited for, the, uh, for their type of assessment. And so that, that can then sometimes also be the case where, where there are creative uses of functionalities or where the functionality is extended to then also suit those other needs. And yes, I can switch back to the teacher um, to show you what that overview page looks like. It's very much the same as for the student, um, only with the difference that they can actually sign off or mark uh, outcomes as completed, which then takes away the add activity button and doesn't allow them to talk about the progress that students have made anymore. 
But if we have one uh, outcome that hasn't been marked as completed yet, then you can see that uh, there are the pages and also the add activity buttons are there. And they can also um, say what progress a student has made towards that outcome. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of really three levels that can be stepped through in order to give students feedback. If you don't need the check-in, so the, the levels of achievement, then you don't need to use them, then there's um, two levels available. Is there also an overview of all students the teacher needs to look at? No, not yet. Um, so that is one, one of those functionalities that would be wonderful at some point to put in. Um, at the moment, that was not really of importance for our client. And so we focused on making the improvements to Mahara um, to have that better workflow experience within the portfolio that the students and the teachers create. Okay, so let's take a look at the other big functionality that I wanted to show you. And for that, I'll go back to Paula, my student. And the, the other functionality does sit in the regular portfolio area. So in the personal portfolios and has to do with submissions. And so that is functionality that Carlton University in Canada has sponsored, um, with whom we have been working for quite a while actually in improving the LTI connection um, because they are not using Moodle. And so there we are bound to, to just use LTI, which is a, a good challenge. And um, they, they had run into some, again, workflow problems because um, they were limited in what could be done in the learning management system um, versus what could be done in Mahara. And so it was not possible to make changes to their LMS. Therefore, we needed to look at, well, how can we make things, uh, how can we change things in Mahara in order to support the workflow better? And so what they had experienced was that when a student submitted their portfolio into the LMS, essentially what happened is that a link was put into a text box that was the link to the portfolio. Now you can imagine deadline is coming up for a student, um, if we, all the nerves are frazzled and so it did happen quite frequently apparently that students accidentally deleted the link out of the text box and the limitations of LTI are such that this link cannot be retrieved. That, of course, in turn meant that their portfolio was locked and therefore not available anymore to be selected to be submitted. Now, five minutes before the deadline, that's not really good for any student. And of course, the support staff might not be working at that time um, because they had already had the possibility in Mahada to unlock portfolios, which Carlton had also sponsored. And so we were looking at, well, how can we change that? What would it mean? And so we did come back to an idea that we had already pondered a while ago, which was to not actually sub, uh, to, to submit a copy of a portfolio or to make a copy, to make a copy of a portfolio uh, that can then be used for assessment purposes but it doesn't affect the original portfolio. And so I'm going to show you that. So we have a portfolio and it doesn't matter whether you have a page or a collection. And it's a very light portfolio because um, I have not gotten quite so far in my learning yet, but I do need to submit something. And the submission process change has been done both for LMS um, connections through LTI and also directly in Mahara Groups so that we have one consistent um, way of doing that. So in this case, for simplicity's sake, I submit my portfolio to the group. But what happens instead of submitting this portfolio, a copy is made and submitted for assessment. 
So I click yes. Now all my artifacts and blocks are copied, or rather that the um, files are linked into that portfolio. And I can view my submission. So my portfolio is called portfolio title. And now when I look at my portfolio submission, it is called portfolio title, but automatically it received the date when I submitted that portfolio. Now this portfolio is locked from editing. I cannot make any changes. And if I become my teacher, because Petra is also Paula's portfolio submission teacher, then I see the submission normally as I would expect in the group. So this is a copy. Now I can release this portfolio, of course, but before doing so, you might wonder, okay, so now when I go to my portfolio overview page, where is that submission? Because all I see is that portfolio title portfolio. And that is where show submitted portfolios come in because of course we didn't want to overload the screen, especially when, um, when the students submit submit portfolios endlessly. Uh, at the artifacts aren't actually copied because we use normal Mahara functionality that they, um, that they are then submitted in this case still, yes. So the artifacts cannot be changed. Um, if that, um, that could be changed in future, but what we did want to avoid is just creating multiple copies of the same thing that then need to be consolidated and would be very difficult to, to manage because, um, of course, when a page is deleted, the artifacts are still there and the files are still there. So the, the storage would just grow and students might, um, not really know which, which file goes where. So now if I want to show my submitted portfolios, I can do so. So here's the portfolio that I submitted. And here is my portfolio that I submitted just now. It is color marked in orange and also has a different icon. So it does not have the more options icon so that we don't just use the differentiation in the color, but also through icons. And so clicking that shows me the regular details that you are already used to from um, the previous submission when you submitted the original, the, the creation date and where it was submitted to. In addition, there's also the link to the original portfolio. So in case a student doesn't remember what it was called or where they can find it if they have a lot of portfolios, they can click that and are taken to the original, which they, of course, can continue editing. Now, as teacher, I've looked at that portfolio, deemed it, yes, it passes, and I release it. Become my student again. Okay, so I still don't see that copy in my portfolio overview page. So show submitted portfolios. Now, instead of having the yellow orange color, the portfolio now has a green background and the icon also changed because now the portfolio has been released. We do not automatically return the portfolio though to the student because um, some might not want it um, and just really want to leave it under submitted portfolios because they've moved on with their other portfolio. They do not need to rework anything and the like, and therefore don't really need it so that they can see it if they need it, but they don't have to worry about it. And so if a portfolio has been released, they can still not edit it so that it's very clear that they need to take an action if they want to change anything. So how can I now change something? Well, I can click my icon and be added the configuration screen. 
This configuration screen, by the way, is now also available for pages. In the past, you only had the edit and delete icons, but now you can immediately go to the configuration screen, which makes it so much easier to um, make any quick changes because you don't need to go to a page first, click into edit mode, and then go into the configuration screen from there. So clicking the configure screen, I see under advanced options that this portfolio is linked to my original portfolio, so I can also go to that, and that it is still marked as a submission. Now, if I take that off, and in this case, I just want to give it a different title um, so that I can differentiate it from the original. Click Save. And now I can edit this portfolio entirely. Now, if I want to, earlier on, the question was, well, is there an overview? Well, there is actually an overview for administrators. So if I just quickly log in as my admin, I can go to the site administration groups and see submissions. So this submission screen um, already existed before 2304. If you hadn't seen it yet in your instance, check it out because there you see all the submissions that have been archived and you also see all current submissions. And so from this screen, you can release all the submissions, which takes them then into that in-between state between being a regular portfolio and being a submitted portfolio. Or I can also release and return the portfolio uh, so that students immediately jump from the submission to the normal portfolio and can continue editing it. Now, how can this actually be Use, um, and which other way can this actually still be useful for students? Well, one really nice use case that I can see for, the, um, for this change to always submit a copy instead of the original portfolio is when you, have, um, when you want students to submit a collection that consists of a number of template pages and students need to fill in those pages in different weeks. So here we have week one, then there's week two and week three. Now, if you wanted to submit such a collection um, for assessment in the past, you, uh, and you still wanted to copy the entire collection into the student account, the student needed to remove the pages from the collection submit each page individually, wait until the teacher returned each page, and then put it back into the collection. Or alternatively, if that didn't work for you, um, the student could submit the entire collection, which locked all the pages, and needed to wait until the teacher finished grading and return the portfolio and could then only continue working on the other pages. Now that's not needed anymore because you can submit a collection as many times as you like. So I can, once I've finished week one, I can submit the entire collection to the teacher. And the teacher, of course, would know to only look at um, the filled in template page for week one and just ignore the rest. Um, once week two comes along, I can submit the entire collection again, and the teacher just looks at week two and so on. In the meantime, I can continue working on my original portfolio and work on week three or week four or week five. And so that is, I think, also another practical uh, reason why, um, why a copy is a good idea, I think. Um, there are, of course, cases potentially when you say, well, I want the student to rework things where you would then still need to move a page out and move another page into the collection that shall hold the uh, complete assessment. Um, and so there can still be some improvements that we can make, but for the time being, we wanted to kind of focus on this main workflow to ensure that students do not need to seek out support as much when they submitted a portfolio accidentally or 
don't have access to it anymore um, because then because it's an assessment it's just quite quite a bit of um, admin involved in order to ensure that the uh, the student wasn't cheating and things like that and so it's it just uh, saves thing uh, saves nerves for students teachers and also staff uh, who are the support staff for both students and teachers. So those were the two big new features that we have put into Mahara and also a number of small ones. So for example, the full width for blocks um, that you can immediately go into the configuration screen. We also have it um, directly available here rather than um, Oh, we have it also available here in that menu when you are in display mode, because in the past you again needed to go into edit mode and then click the configure icon in order to jump to the settings. So we are removing some of those barriers. We've also changed the icon for sharing, um, which is the icon used on Android, I must say, um, because iOS looked more like a download. So we did not go that way. But it um, is now consistent with the icons that we actually use on the edit, uh, on the share page. And so consistent and in language use as well, rather than switching between share and manage access so much. And um, yeah, some smaller improvements, some bigger improvements. We've consolidated some more icons. We worked on the PHP 8 support so that we are now more comfortable um, that people can go with that also for production sites. It's still worthwhile testing it on testing as much as you can, uh, but uh, it should certainly work better out of the box because also all the BHEAD tests, our automated tests are passing. Um, and that is a good sign that the major functionality that is being tested by our automation test suite is working as expected. And so we still have um, about 10 minutes time if you have any questions or comments. <laughs> 